right, so let's talk about what you are seeing right now as we do see the economy come back to life, not only here in the U.S., but in other parts of the world that you operate as well. What does that mean for manufacturing right now, especially given the fact that we do see aluminum prices up 22 percent on the year so far? Yeah, you know, for our business, you know, we haven't missed a beat. Um, we were deemed an essential business ever since the get-go, and so we've been going nonstop. You know, I think North America, in terms of, quote, recovery, is definitely further ahead of Europe and South America, probably in that order. But our business, you know, we can't keep up with demand. We're, we're investing three to four X what we typically do just to keep up with the demand. Now, it may be unique to us because we make metal beverage containers, and as the uh, uh, stay-at-home provisions happened a year ago, we saw such a big uh, boom in our business, and it continues largely because of this whole sustainability angle. That, that's interesting to hear. Um, as, so as you see restaurants, event spaces, et cetera, open up, you expect that demand for those types of containers to continue? They definitely do. Here, here's a great example. You think about the phenomenon about spike seltzers. You go into an on-premise pub right now and look at the number of people holding a beverage can of a spike seltzer of some sort. I think you're seeing a direct-to-retailer channels open up in ways that didn't exist pre-COVID. And so, you know, it's, it, I think in today's world, people often look to Nielsen and IRI data as a good barometer of what's happening with our business. But that's increasingly becoming a smaller part. It's still an important part. Don't get me wrong, the grocery channel, et cetera. But there's many other channels that have opened up, and we're trying to create an opportunity around that. So you're investing heavily, and I know you're building more manufacturing facilities here in the U.S., for example, as well. But when you do see raw material prices increasing, I mentioned the jump we've seen in aluminum so far this year. Uh, what does that mean in terms of not only costs to manufacture, but how much you can realize higher prices in your end markets? Well, first, first and foremost, a couple of things about aluminum. Number one, aluminum is about at the same price it was three years ago. So, yes, it's up okay. over the last 12 months. Um, but, but I think it has, and there is some volatility in that. I, I think the tariffs that you know were enacted a few years ago are not a help. We're trying to stimulate uh, onshore uh, manufacturer of aluminum in the way. But I think overall, you're right. We are seeing inflation. We have no choice. We don't have a, a cost structure that uh, allows us to absorb absorb that. So we've been pushing it through the supply chain. And I do think in inflation. You know, we haven't lived with inflation for what approximately 30 years in any meaningful way right now. So there's a lot of relearning, I think, that needs to happen as to how to deal with in an inflationary environment. I realize that the Biden administration is looking to have talks around some of those tariffs where um, the EU is concerned. But the fact that we still have duties in place in general, is that part of the reason you're investing in the U.S. for more manufacturing? Not necessarily, because at the end of the day, we are a local manufacturer, because if we ship our product more than a few hundred miles, the uh, as I joke, you might, might as well tack dollar bills onto the pallets because you're, you're chewing up all your profit in terms of freight. And so it really has to do with the demand. And I think this whole sustainability, you know, it's interesting, go back to 2018, and it, that's really when you saw tangible evidence of this whole sustainability movement about anti-plastic. Uh, and it accelerated in 19. We were excited about 2020, and then COVID hit. And as I said, it, because of stay home measures, uh, this pantry stuffing, and as we sit here today, yes, the month of April and May, there were some a little bit more challenging year-over-year -year comps because of this uh, pantry stuffing, but we still see, relative to 19, very strong growth. And in my 23 years at Ball Corporation, I've never seen our end markets as strong as they are today. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.